We are in a straight place indeed when we are enclosed in self, but when we emerge from that prison and enter into the immensity of God and the liberty of His children, we are set at large. I am rejoiced to find that God has reduced you to a state of weakness. Your self-love can neither be convinced nor vanquished by any other means, ever finding secret resources and impenetrable retreats in your courage and ingenuity. It was hidden from your eyes while it fed upon the subtle poison of an apparent generosity by which you constantly sacrificed yourself for others. God has forced it to cry aloud, to come forth into open day, and to display its excessive jealousy. Oh, how painful, but how useful are these seasons of weakness! While any self-love remains, we are afraid of its being revealed, but so long as the least symptom of it lurks in the most secret recesses of the heart, God pursues it and by some infinitely merciful blow forces it into the light. The poison then becomes the remedy. Self-love, pushed to extremity, discovers itself in all its deformity by a transport of despair, and disgraces all the refinements and dissipates the flattering illusions of a whole life. God sets before your eyes your idol, self, you behold it and cannot turn your eyes away. And as you have no longer power over yourself, you cannot keep the sight from others. Thus, to exhibit self-love without its mask is the most mortifying punishment that can be inflicted. We no longer behold it wise, discreet, polite, self-possessed, and courageous in sacrificing itself for others. It is no longer the self-love whose nourishment consisted in the belief that it had need of nothing and the persuasion that its greatness and generosity deserved a different name. It is the selfishness of a silly child screaming at the loss of an apple. But it is far more tormenting, for it also weeps from rage that it has wept. It cannot be still and refuses all comfort because its venomous character has been detected. It beholds itself foolish, rude, and impertinent, and is forced to look its own frightful countenance in the face. It says with Job, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Job 3.25 for precisely that which it most fears is the most necessary means of its destruction. Thank you for listening to this sample. The full-length audiobook may be purchased exclusively at audible.com, amazon.com, or the iTunes store. For additional Christian audiobooks or to learn how we can narrate your own book, please go to godsounds.com. God Sounds, where faith is heard.